right? You, you either, it's very simple. You either believe one of two things. And if there's, a, if, if there's another third option, please write it down in the comments. You either believe there's a, there's a problem with how you, America, sees us. Or you believe inherently that, that we are lower than you. That we are more prone to violence than you. That we are more prone to being uh, low income than you. That we are less prone to be educated than you. It's one or the other because there's more black people in prison than not. Than other races. Right? There's less black people in college than other races. There's more, there's more poverty-stricken black people than others. So either you believe we're, we're inherently like that, or there's a problem. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Monday, June 1st. Just wanted to tap in with you guys real quick. I'm not even sure where to start or what to say, uh, but I do believe that some communication, some honest dialogue needs to start, like right about now, right? I think part of it is, you know, I tried to do this live on Facebook, but for some reason, I couldn't, uh, it wouldn't go, it wouldn't launch. It, you know, it would start, put the title in, and then hit go live, and it would go black screen. So I'm not sure if people are online live streaming a lot or if, or if they're filtering out what the titles are. Uh, but my title was, Admit You Don't Value Me. And I had the you in quotes, Admit You Don't Value Me, and then maybe we can begin to heal. And so I'm going to talk about just how I'm feeling. And it might, I might rant, it might go in you know, different circles and it might not be linear, uh, but I sh it shouldn't have to be a perfect soliloquy, right, for me to speak how I'm feeling. I shouldn't need to feel like I need to be a perfect speaker and an orator to present how I feel to people. But what, I, what I'm hopeful is that if enough people who are black like me, communicate, then maybe enough people who are not black, who know that person can relate better. Because you guys all see the celebrities speaking out and you see actors and athletes who are black speaking out. But maybe if somebody you know tells you how they feel, it will resonate more. So hopefully if enough people speak, that person will be a black person that somebody knows. And I might be the only black person you know who's speaking to you about how they feel. So I take that very seriously. So when I say you, as I talk, I'm not talking about you particularly. I'm talking about you as an America, as an America. You as in all of us. You as in, as in the you who is making me feel different and feel bad. And so I want to address in particular two things that continue to bug me, right? Two things that continue to bug me. One of them is the rioting, right? The rioting behind what happened with George Floyd and, and number, a number of, of black men and now women being killed innocently in the streets, lynched, if you will, innocently in front of all of us to watch, right? So the response to that, the riots, violence begets violence, right? And that is not what I promote. You don't see me out there, right? But I'm not judging them because I'm not necessarily in that city in that situation. I'm doing what I can to speak out. I'm doing what I can to tell you how I feel watching a black person be treated like a freaking dog in the streets while people watch, while authority figures watch as he's treated like a dog. So I'm asking you 
to admit that you don't value me the way you value you and people who look like you. I mean, let's be honest about it. You, the, we as a country have, a, have, have, have devalued black people. We may, maybe have never valued us. That's how we feel. That's what we see. That's what you show us. We have a low, we have a low tolerance, right, for the death of white people, but a high tolerance for the death of black men. It's high. Our tolerance as a, as a nation is high for the death of black men. And this goes back years. I saw a picture of, of, a, of a guy being hung, you know, right after slavery probably. And people were around him working still. My son saw that image of a black man being hung in a field while his family probably was around him still working. We don't value us. And I, and I go back to what I said in my last video. Right? You, you either, it's very simple, you either believe one of two things. And if there's, a, if there's another third option, please write it down in the comments. You either believe there's a, there's a problem with how you, America, sees us. Or you believe inherently that, that we are lower than you. That we are more prone to violence than you. That we are more prone to being uh, low income than you. That we are less prone to be educated than you. It's one or the other. Because there's more black people in prison than not. Than other races. Right? There's less black people in college than other races. There's more, there's more poverty stricken black people than others. So either you believe we're, we're inherently like that or there's a problem. It's that simple. And if you admit that, okay, maybe I do kind of believe that I'm better than black people, then we can talk about that and have a real discussion because the rioting is a response to how we feel. It's a response to what's been going on. You say it should be peaceful. Colin Kaepernick was peaceful. How did you treat him? Martin Luther King was peaceful. And you shot him. You killed him. So don't tell me they can do it peacefully. We can't do it peacefully. We tried that. Again, I'm not out there. But I understand how that could happen. And for you to sit there and say you don't understand how that can happen means you don't value us. And if you admit that, we can talk about it. But you got to admit it first. You can't sit there and say, oh, look at these guys doing this rioting. I, I wouldn't, you would never do that. You would never do that. Ever. So if you're in the same situation, you wouldn't do that. That means you think we're more prone to do that than you are. Let's talk about that. That angers me. They're thugs. What is a thug? A black person? Right? To me, that, that, that's, just, that's just, you know, camouflaging black people. I love analogies, guys. It's the analogy, if a woman is being beaten and she's being, you know, treated crap, crappily and has not, has not been able to go out and develop skills, to leave the relationship and she turns around and kills her husband. Nobody thinks that's bad. Nobody frowns upon that woman who had only one way out was violence. But yet for, for hundreds of years, we've been victimized and hung and treated less than. And when we respond after we try to do it peacefully, look at them. Look at how they acting. That hurts me. And then, and then there's people like, like I might be one of the few black people you communicate with and you might see me differently. 
because I'm Coach Bobby and I and I go to speaking engagements and I do this and I have an MBA in finance and all. If I go in certain situations and certain places, I'm just like George Floyd. I'm no different. I'm no different. And that's why it hurts. So, so when you say things like, look at them, why would they burn their own cities down? Why would they do that? And you never think about what would you do if you continue to see you people like you treated like that? How would you respond? And if you can't answer that, then don't answer anything. Because you can't answer it. So don't answer anything. Just say, we got to change. I don't know how. We got to change. And I don't know how. But it starts with admitting that in your soul and spirit, you think I'm less than you. You do. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. You do. That's the first step. And we got to get the path. Oh my, I get it. America is great. It's the best country in the world in a lot of ways. There's opportunities here that you can't get other places. I get it. But stop telling me that if I don't like it to go back. To, go back to where? Go back to where? You brought me here. You brought my ancestors here. I had no idea where they came from. Go back. Nigeria, Kenya, Ethiopia. I don't know where I'm from. You do. I promise you, you know where you're from. But you want me to go back to somewhere I don't know where, where it is? After I helped build this place? After my, after my ancestors' blood, sweat, and tears are in the soil? My ancestors' blood fertilized this soil. And you want me to go back? Go back to where? I don't have a language. That's mine. I don't have a country. That's mine. If anybody's a patriot, it's me. It's us. After all this time here being treated as, as third, fourth, fifth rate citizens, we still bear the flag in the military. We still bear the flag for the most part in our, in our way of life. So if anybody's a patriot and deserves to live here, it's us. And we can't demand to be treated right? We can't ask you to treat us fairly? And when we ask you nicely, you say, okay, we'll get to that. When it goes over and over again, we respond like this, and, and now you react? And that confirms what you think about us? It's hurtful, guys. It's hurtful. And I'm supposed to get up on a Monday and put on my, on, on my shirt and tie, you know, metaphorically, and go to work and train you and speak to you as if nothing's happening? That's not fair. That's all I can say. That's not fair. I know that's what three-year-olds say, right? That's not fair. But it's not fair. And, and God, I said it in my last video, God has been good to me because I could have been killed long before this. Much as I yell, as angry as I get, as alpha male as I am, I could have been killed way before this. In a dumb situation probably, because I don't drink, ain't never been drunk, I don't like to fool, I don't, really, I don't really go out looking for fights. But I'm aggressive. Right now I'm big and strong. I pose a threat to some officers probably. And don't get it wrong. I got people on my street who are officers. So I'm not. It, don't, it, it, don't, it ain't about that. People say, well, there's plenty of good officers. I know that. I know that. The problem is not with the guy who had his knee on that man's neck. In some ways, we expect that. We live through that. So he ain't the problem. The problem is, is everybody else allowing it to happen. If you slap me and I tell the teacher you slap me and she don't do anything, she's the problem. 
And America is confirming that we ain't worse crap because they watched that what we watched and let it happen. And it continues to happen. So the first step is just admit you don't value us. Inherently. It ain't your fault. Because I don't, I, I don't see me as valuable because of how I grew up. So I know you don't. I don't see me as equal. So I know you don't as big and strong as I get, as many as many letters behind my name as I get, I'll never be white. And that and that in some ways that bothers me. And that ain't right. So if I feel that way about me, I know you gotta feel that way about me. And we can't get better until you admit it. People say, what's the answer? The answer is we have more training. We gotta have no. None of that's going to change it. We do need training. We have training. What that guy did was not in the book. He didn't train officers to do that. He was trained correctly. People around him were certainly trained correctly. So, so you can't, I can't make you like me. I can't make you value me. And until we address that and talk about that, What's going to change? Nothing's going to change until you see me as equal. Until you stop with all this nonsense about, about how they do this and they do that. And until that stops, it won't change. Until you stop looking at riots as a thing that they do, a thing that they do, it won't change. Until you see it as something that you maybe could do that you might respond in that way if confronted with a similar history as long as it's they and us I don't care how you legalize it or train them it won't change so I want you guys just stop talking about stuff to the world that you don't know about and you don't know about it stop pretending you do I don't know about everything so I, I know you don't just empathize and listen why would people burn their own cities why do inner city blacks kill other inner city blacks at a high rate why are there more blacks in prison why are there single, single parent homes at a much higher rate in, in inner cities and in black communities? There's a reason for that. Why do, do white officers feel threatened to kill and, and, and kill black unarmed men? If you don't know the answer, stop talking like you do. If you don't have the solution and we don't, stop acting like you do. Say you don't have the answer and let's talk about it. Say you feel weird about black people and let's talk about it. Stop judging everybody. Stop devaluing other people. Be honest in here. Be honest in here. And then maybe this, this us and them can become a we. And then maybe this us and them can become a we. All right, guys, I love you. Let's keep praying. Let's keep, let's keep empathizing. And let's just start talking and being honest about stuff. All right, guys, I love you. Bye-bye.